The problem with Arduino, particularly for Internet of Things or IoT projects, is that once you factor in the cost of an Ethernet or Wi-Fi shield, it can really get expensive quickly, upwards of $40, even more if you're buying official boards rather than clones. But what if I told you there was an Arduino compatible development board with built-in Wi-Fi available for less than $10? Well, there is. Meet the Arduino killer, the ESP8266. Specifically, the ESP8266 model 12E, otherwise known as Node MCU version 1. You can get hold of these directly from China for around $7.50, in fact, probably even cheaper by the time you're watching this video. Now, there is a number of 8266 boards available. However, this particular one, the 12E, is the one I recommend for three reasons. One, it has a ton of I.O. ports. Some of the earlier models only had one or two digital I.O. ports. Two, it's got a serial driver built into it, so all you need to do is to plug in the USB cable and hit upload. With some of the other models, you would have to add in an FTDI driver. And there was also a bit of a dance to do with the pins where you had to reset the board to put it into uploading. No, none of that. With this one, you just plug it in, program it, as you would with an Arduino. And thirdly, it has a built-in power regulator. So you can power it straight off USB. You just plug in the USB cable, it's powered. Other boards would require a 3.3 volt regulator. So with this one, you can literally power it off any old phone charger just with a USB cable, making it perfect to deploy around your house. Now you can buy cheaper 8266 boards, but it's not a lot cheaper. And once you factor in the cost of the FTDI serial driver and the uh, power regulator, it's about the same cost, if not more. The only downside to using ESP8266 boards rather than Arduino is that the pins are not five volt tolerant. That means if you have sensors which are going to give out a five volt signal on the data line, then you will need to use a logic shifter to put the five volt down to 3.3 volts. However, most sensors I've found can actually work comfortably with 3.3 volts and will output 3.3 volts too. You'll see on the circuit that it has an antenna etched into the board for Wi-Fi connections. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be as powerful as one that you can plug in and screw on a little SMA connector, but I haven't had much problem around the house except for places where I wouldn't have Wi-Fi reception anyway to my phone, for instance. So actually, not that bad. Anyway, check out the link in the description for a complete getting started guide with one of these, where I show you not only how to work with this within the Arduino development environment, but also some test apps and then how to transform yours with the help of a DHT11 sensor into a cheap smart home sensor array, which gathers sensor data and then broadcasts it out over MQTT, which can then be fed into your own home automation software such as OpenHab. There's also a link in the description for our getting started with OpenHab on Raspberry Pi guide if you need that too. Thanks for watching and if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel for more weekly technology tutorials. And we also have incredible gadget giveaways every week. You'll love it. Just subscribe now.